Hi, this is Mark Brown with Game Makers Toolkit, a series on video game design. The first thing I did when I emerged from Vault 111 in Fallout 4 was deactivate the main quest. And whenever someone gives me a mission... Those raiders that killed Mary, they took her locket too. If you could get it back, it'd mean a lot to us. I deactivate that too. I'm doing this slightly mad thing because I had just been playing The Witcher 3 and felt that the game's helpful hand-holding quest information, like the commands on the side of the screen, the marker on the mini-map and the magic GPS trail to my next location, was kind of spoiling the experience. Like, take this chap with the funny hairdo. He's given me some directions to my next quest point and he says, Notice more pond near the village. Path leads off from it. Follow that till you come across a lone rock. Walk around that, then to the woods. Find the old cart, you're there. Okay, got it. Pond, boulder, cart. I'm on it. But as soon as we leave the conversation, a dotted line appears on my mini-map. So I follow it. I end up here, and I guess I have to find... A large stone near the pond. Ah, God damn it, Geralt. I was just about to say that. The quests in this game are often exciting and funny and thoughtful, but getting to them just has you blindly stumbling from waypoint to waypoint, not fully taking in this incredible world that CD Projekt Red has established. It's so hard to be truly immersed in a world like this when you spend most of your time operating in this artificial video game layer that sits on top of everything else. Games with non-linear levels and big open worlds didn't used to be like this. It's hard to believe there was once a time before floating arrows and mini-maps, but go back and play Deus Ex, and when Paul Denton says he has a map for you, he just means you now have an aerial photo in your notes, and you'll have to figure out where you are, where your objective is, and where to go by observing and investigating. Similarly, the maps in the original Thief were incomplete sketches covered in doodles and notes. And then there's Morrowind. You've got a map, but it only shows you places you've been, so if you need to get somewhere new, you need to ask someone for directions, or consult your journal, or look at a signpost. You actually have to be a part of the world and become immersed in the landscape. Instead of simply following a trail of breadcrumbs, you make your own way through Vardenfell, and often end up finding secrets and surprises along the way. A few games are still carrying that torch. Science-based survival sim Miasmata, for example, offers you a map which is pieced together from places you've been and scraps of paper you find, but it refuses to show you your current position unless you get to a good vantage point and triangulate your location by pointing to two known structures, or weenies if you watched the previous episode. Again, simply moving through the world requires skill and determination, and there's a huge sense of reward when you reach your destination. But okay, those are arcane retro games and high-concept indies. What about modern AAA open-worlders that feel the need to offer dynamically updated maps and helpful hints in the name of accessibility? Well, how about more optional quests that shun such navigational aids and encourage devoted players to really engage with the world, like the treasure maps you find in games like Red Dead Redemption, Skyrim, and Assassin's Creed Black Flag. The idea with these is that you get a scrap of paper which directs you to some hidden booty. The map might have a crude drawing of some landmass or a rock or a tree, and that's about it. You then need to scour the landscape and find the real-world equivalent of this drawing, you're left to figure it out yourself with no hints, no map markers, no hand-holding. They're fun because they encourage you to really study and explore the game's world. And they also have a nice byproduct in that they delay the gratification of getting a reward, like finding keys to open lockers in Yakuza, or hitting goddess stones to unlock goddess chests in Skyward Sword. Putting an extra step in before finding a reward makes it all the more sweeter. Anyway, I always cherish these scraps of paper in games because they give me a chance to slow down, take in the environment, and figure things out for myself. The other way to encourage proper exploration is with small scavenger hunts that don't actually count as quests. Sometimes they're called hidden quests or unlisted quests by the fans. One of my most memorable moments in Fallout 3 took place in the Anchorage Memorial Museum. I hacked into this computer and found a note about a hidden stash behind a busted storage door near the service entrance. 
I just needed to find a floor safe in the clinic. Which is this room. How do I know it's the clinic? Well, it says clinic on the door, which is a pretty big giveaway, but also there's an operating table, and x-rays on the wall, and a changing screen, and a scalpel in the locker. You can see how playing in this fashion encourages you to read the world in a very different but more organic way. Anyway, inside the safe is a component which lets me open the door, and behind that door is some goodies, a key, and a note pointing me to a refrigerator, which I find and open to get my prize. A big load of bottle caps and a recipe for Myalurk cakes? Well, turns out the recipe is just an easter egg, an inside joke at Bethesda, but I didn't care. The real reward was the chance to engage my brain, to study the surroundings, and to follow clues instead of breadcrumbs. So that's why I'm wandering the wasteland in Fallout 4 without waypoints and quest markers. I want to be led by my own curiosity, and not by a compass. I want to find interesting notes and follow scavenger hunts, but using my own powers of investigation. I want to see some interesting building over the horizon, and just go see what fun treasures or stories can be found inside. And when I find a note that says, I found the mayor in the tub last night. Locked the door before the missus found him. I want to find the right room by finding a sign like this, instead of just following a waypoint. I'm not exactly making much meaningful progress in the game, mind you. I've been playing Fallout 4 for around 10 hours and finished exactly two quests. The game simply isn't designed to be played this way. Like how you could also turn off all the quest helpers in The Witcher 3, but then some guy will say, The patrol has been lost, somewhere along the south shore of Lake Windomer and you soon realise there are no signposts and no place names on your map and you can't ask for directions. So you try and find it yourself and you end up in a bandit camp and you run away and oh god is that a bear this has gone very wrong indeed. But I am having fun. Perhaps in an ideal world, games like this would be perfectly playable without map markers but you could turn them on if you get really lost or you just want to make some fast progress. But for now at least, it would be cool to see a few more optional missions in games that don't show up on your map or your quest log and let you take a moment to really soak the world in, to get around through observation and investigation and not blind subservience to that little dotted line. Hi guys, it's Mark here. Thank you so much for watching the episode. If you enjoyed it, please leave a comment, like the video, subscribe to the channel, or consider pitching in via Patreon. This month, my supporters not only helped fund the episode, but helped with suggestions and ideas for this very episode. If you want to get involved and literally make the show happen, then please head over to patreon.com.